Hello there, I'm Dr. Powell, and today I'd like to take a few moments to talk to you a little bit about the similarities and the differences between the different hair transplant procedures. The basic principle behind hair transplant surgery is that we take good strong hair from the regions in the back and the sides of the head because they are permanent and they're genetically resistant to the effects of the hormones that cause male pattern baldness. We then place these hairs into the areas of hair loss. There are two main methods for extracting hair follicles that are used to create a natural looking hair transplant. And these are the FUT and the FUE. The primary difference between the two procedures is in how the hair follicles are harvested. The first method, and in my opinion the best method, is the FUT or follicular unit transplantation. This is also commonly known as the strip procedure. In this method, a narrow strip is taken from the donor area and all the hair to be transplanted is harvested at once. Then, then under magnification using stereo microscopes, the strip is then reduced into sequentially smaller sizes down to the individual hair follicles to be transplanted. The other method is the follicular unit extraction, or FUE. For this method, we use very small tools to extract the individual follicular units from the donor area. One by one, these units are extracted and then transplanted to the balding areas. As a side note, FUE is often promoted as being scarless. However, this claim is disingenuous because this technique requires the use of a punch device that leaves small round holes that are left to scab, creating small round scars. Now don't get me wrong, FUE does have a role in hair restoration and we'll cover that shortly. Some offices also offer a third procedure that is called the modified FUT procedure. For this method, instead of taking out the follicles one by one as in FUE, or taking out a long strip as in the FUT, they take mini strips, two to three centimeters in size. So instead of one long linear scar, there are four or five small dash scars. This method gives the benefits of FUT while making it easier to wear shorter hairstyles. Now that we've covered the different extraction methods, now let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of each procedure. In order to have optimal results, FUV requires a particular set of skills and experience because it is a blind procedure as a physician can only estimate the direction of the hair root below the skin within the scalp when they apply the punch tool used to cut around the follicular unit for extraction. And because the physician is unable to directly visualize the course of the hair within the scalp, this leads to increased risk of transecting or cutting the follicle. As a result, every attempt at extraction of a follicle may not yield viable hair to be transplanted. Consequently, the best FUE candidates have straight or slightly wavy hair as opposed to those who have very curly or kinky hair. Skin thickness and texture also affect the success rates of follicular unit extraction in FUE. Hair follicles and thicker skin are more anchored to the surrounding structures, making it more difficult to free the follicle with the FUE device. Thin, mushy skin also has its own set of challenges. However, in contrast to FUE, the strip method would give high quality yields for all hair and skin types. Aside from hair and skin type, the number one characteristic of a good FUE candidate is somebody who does not need a large number of follicular grafts to achieve their desired result. FUE can also be considered for those who plan to have short hairstyles or for those who need to resume regular activity relatively quickly. There are also individuals who have limited scalp laxity or glide, and because of this, they may not be ideal candidates for the strip procedure. For these individuals, FUE may be the only viable option because there can be difficulties in closing the donor strip site as well as the greater potential for increased scarring and stretch at that region. During an FUE, approximately no more than one out of every five hair follicles should be harvested from a region in order to avoid creating areas of visible thinning and scarring within that region. Therein lies another major downside to FUE. Because in order to harvest a sufficient number of grafts, the hair follicles are taken from a much larger area, and this creates the risk of including hairs that are outside the safe zone and therefore may not be permanent and may contribute to the thinning of the transplanted area over time. With the strip method, hair is taken from only within the safe donor region, which is the area that is anticipated not to have progression of hair loss. It is also the mid-portion of the safe donor region that often contains the very best quality hair for transplantation. FUE does not allow us to fully access this area while the strip procedure does. Another difference between FUE and FUT is not only the quantity, but also the quality of the grafts. When compared to FUE, both strip methods provide much higher yield of hair follicles to be transplanted. This is primarily due to how the hairs are extracted. And so, if the goal is to achieve maximal fullness, the strip procedure would be the best option. 
During an FUE procedure, there's much more mechanical handling of the hair follicles. And even with the best of hands, the major drawback with the FUE is that follicles themselves are more susceptible to trauma during the many stages of the extraction process. Only those grafts judged to be of good quality are transplanted, but even after a diligent quality inspection of the graft, the delicate structures of the hair follicles may have sustained undetectable damage during the extraction with FUE device, thereby resulting in poor growth. The strip method tends to give much higher quality grafts because of the use of microscopes during their harvesting. This avoids injury to the follicles and its structures. It is also for this reason that the strip method has higher survival rates of the grafts, leading to better growth and aesthetic appearance. The FUE procedure is very time intensive because of the longer surgical time required to extract of each follicular unit. As a result, the overall downtime can be greater, especially if looking to transplant large number of hairs, since this would typically need to be performed over two or more sessions. In addition, because of this time intensiveness, FUE procedures are typically much more expensive compared to FUT. Some hair transplant candidates are reluctant to go for the strip procedure because they want to avoid the telltale linear donor scar. However, the scar tends to be very thin and is easily camouflaged by the surrounding hair. Additionally, transplanting a few FUE grafts in a final procedure or getting scalp micropigmentation can further minimize the scar's appearance. Misleadingly, FUE has often been falsely promoted as a scarless procedure. Yes, while it is true that there is no linear scar as with the strip method, there are, however, hundreds if not thousands of small scars that dot the entire donor region, depending on the number of extraction attempts. This diffuse Swiss cheese scarring in FUE causes a negative impact on the donor area, not only because the area has been thinned by this method, but also because these small scars distort the remaining follicular units and surrounding tissue, making future extractions in a following procedure more challenging and thereby limiting the total available donor hair. Despite these differences between the extraction methods with their associated pros and cons, the artistry required for the strategic placement of the grafts into the balding recipient area is the same. Needless to say, not every patient is a candidate for each of these methods, and the ideal method or combination of methods will be best determined in consultation with your hair transplant surgeon. To determine the best strategy, your surgeon will have to assess several factors, including your long-term hair restoration goals, your current age, your donor density, the amount of hair that needs to be transplanted, hair and skin type, as well as how you plan to wear your hair. Before you decide to have hair transplant surgery, you must think carefully about your expectations and discuss them with your surgeon. And as you can see, each procedure has its role in hair restoration, so it's important to look for physicians who can offer both services. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure that you like, subscribe, or leave suggestions for future topics below. Until next time.